What's going on, everyone? So, the Lakers have the 17th and 55th pick in the upcoming draft. Now, this draft isn't looked at as this, like, just deep, just, man, every pick is, is a can't-miss type draft. Now, there is always that, like, diamond in the rough. There's always that guy that, you know, turns out to be a great role player or maybe even an all-star or a potential star or, like, even a fringe, right? Like, there's always that potential with a guy the draft is always kind of a crapshoot regardless. I mean, it's really hit and miss. I mean, no, Jaime Jaquez, for example, with Miami Heat. I know a lot of people are really upset and frustrated with that. But, like, look at all the teams that passed on him. And he was, if you could do a redraft, he probably goes top five in the upcoming draft, right? Like, you never know how these things are going to shape up. You never know who's going to just blend in. And it's also situation and environment and team and culture and all that stuff like if Jaime Hawkins was drafted by the Lakers right I know he looked great for Miami he probably doesn't look like that for the Lakers because he probably doesn't even play and if he does it's probably very very limited like Jalen Uchifino didn't play right because we were trying to win a chip that year our roster was looked at as deep and you know so again situation it's like Miami was the perfect spot for him so there's a lot of factors that go into it but regardless I don't believe the Lakers are actually going to draft somebody with 17. I think that they're going to trade that pick. Um, either A, they try it entirely. B, they end up drafting somebody to trade. I think that's actually what they have to do is like actually draft somebody for another team. Or C, if they do draft somebody, they're probably shipping that person out ASAP. Same thing with Jalen Hichifino. I think he's probably gone too. Point is, is like... I see a lot of comments, see a lot of people, you know, and we're going to talk about guys because there is always the possibility. Maybe there's no trade out there. Um, you know, maybe the Lakers are able to work out a move and still keep this. Maybe they're really high. Maybe they do get a wear or an ED and they're just really high on them. And they're like, ah, if we can, you know, go get this guy, you know, a DeJounte Murray without having to give up this year's pick, right? Fine. Let's do that, right? Now we already got our big man situation or whatever, right? So there is a real possibility still so we'll go over some names we'll definitely talk about some people i'm best definitely going to do some like individual breakdowns but i just don't want to see people get super hype and like on a guy because there's so many comments that are like you gotta draft this guy you gotta and i'm like even if they do draft that guy he's probably getting traded so keep expectations calm is my point but what i want to talk about is the lakers kind of direction for this draft period again Obviously, they probably trade the 17th pick, but they still have the 55th pick. It's very possible they pick up a pick somewhere else. You know, maybe they parlay the 17th pick into, you know, another first, you know, like the 20th and the, you know, 40th pick or something like that. Whatever, right? Like, it, it, there's a million possible outcomes and directions in which they could go. Now, a lot of people want the Lakers to draft a big man. Right, you gotta get a big man. You gotta get needy. You gotta get aware. You gotta get one of these big fellas to come in. You know, I see a lot of people are like, look at what uh, uh, Derek Lively's doing. Right, like this guy's like that, and that guy's like that. You never really know, right? Like you don't. Again, it's a crapshoot. You, you're, you're hoping that this guy can come in and make an immediate impact, but it doesn't always work out that way, right? To me, I think that the Lakers. Their priority should be to draft who they believe is the best player available, right? Now, if there if it's a close call, right? Like we'll choose like you know whatever, Edie and you know whoever else, right? Holmes or whatever, right? Like those two guys that say you have them. Say it's close, right? And let's say it's like ah, but we could use a big man more. Then fine, take the big man, right? Like if it's like you know. Like, maybe this guy's slightly better, but, like, he's a bigger need. And we're not, like, I don't think the gap is that far. You know, like, just for a scale, let's say, you know, they believe this guy's an 8 and this guy's, like, a 7, right? But the 7 is the bigger need, right? It's like, oh, we, we could use him as the center for now in the future, right? Then I think you go that route. But outside of that, like, I think... When you're talking about the draft, your job is to always take the best player available, right? Because, again, it is so hit or miss. But if you go with the safest bet, if it does work out, then you just, you figure it out, right? Like, if you end up drafting a guy that's a two guard and he comes in and he's just 
absolute money and competing for rookie of the year or whatever, uh, that's a great problem to have. Maybe you are now you are looking to trade, you know, Max Christie and Austin Reeves and whoever else, right? Or, you know, you get a small forward, right? Because the Lakers have several positions of need, right? Obviously center. They could use some athleticism out on the perimeter. They could use some legit 3 and D guys. You know, even if a guy comes in and he's not like, you know, because a lot of guys in college aren't locked down defensive guys and they're also, you know, 40% from three-point range. Right? Usually it takes a little while, but even if he's like, say, 34% from three-point range, right? It's like, man, but he's like hyper-athletic, getting it done on the defense side, is able to create, go get buckets, right? Like, then like, why wouldn't you carve out a role for him? Like, why wouldn't you get him in? Like, that's a good position. Because the Lakers, again, they, they there's several needs. They don't have this like plethora of young talent. And like I said, they're probably trading some of that. Now, you do have Max Christie, which I am super high on, right? So, if I was the Lakers, I'd prefer not to take a two-guard. Because I think Max Christie is probably your two-guard for the future. And I think he has, like, real potential. I'm not saying he's going to be, like, a superstar or anything like that. But I do think, at worst, he could be, like, a KCP type. Where he's just, like, locked down defensively. Shoots the three ball well. Can create for himself a little bit. I, I mean, you're already seeing that now. I mean, some of our best lineups were with Max Christie at the two. So... He's got good size, good length, good versatility. Maxwell Lewis is another guy that I'm super high on, that I think he has a lot of potential. Um, you know, now he, luckily for him, he's kind of versatile. He can play the two, he can play the three, play the four. Uh, he's got good athleticism. He's got a nice look at shot, right? Potential's there. Can play some defense. Um, we'll see what kind of leaps he takes between his rookie year and this year. It's also very possible that any rookie that the Lakers draft outside of a big man, maybe, um, doesn't even see the basketball court. But if the Lakers do trade for a star, you may end up needing that guy, right? So to me, it's like, what is the plan for the Lakers? If the plan really is to go get a star, then I think you need to draft whether it's a big man or not. You need to draft whoever you think gives you the best chance now and for the future, right? Because anybody that you draft now is going to be good for the future too, right? Because they're all young kids. Even uh, an older draft pick is 22, 23. So to me, it's like, okay, if you're, if you really are looking to like, hey, we want to get a, a star, right? We you want to go get a Trey, want to get a Mitchell, want to get whomever, right? Then I think you, regardless, take the best player available. But if you're kind of like, you know, hey, we want to kind of round out the roster a little better, you know, like we want to go the depth route, I think that there's an argument for, you know, what pieces do you think are most likely, right? So do you think you can get a center via trade? If you do, then why would you go and draft a center, right? Especially if you're going to have one for that guy is going to be the guy for the next several years, right? And then you, you might as well just keep calling Cast in and like Jackson Hayes and have them grow and develop, right? So to me, it's like, what do you think? But let's say they're like, ah, oh, we're not, like, there's not really any centers that make sense to trade for. Then, okay, then go the draft route of drafting an ED or where or whatever, right? So I think it depends, again, what is the vision? What is your idea? What is your plan? What is your goal, right? And then I think the other side of things is if you go the depth route, you could make the argument that you draft the guy you believe that has the most upside in that case, right? Maybe he's not necessarily the best player, but you believe he has the most upside. Kind of like with Jalen Huchifino. They really like Jalen Huchifino's upside. And it was like, that makes sense because it's like, whoever you draft, if you do go the depth route and you end up having nine, 10 guys, that guy, that kid is never going to see the court. And if he does, it's going to be in garbage time. He's going to be basically relegated to the G League. So you might get, you might as well get somebody that you believe, if you know, in two, three years of development, could take those strides and could take those leaps to being a real quality piece, right? So then, to me, it, it just depends on that route. So to me, I just think that hopefully, I mean, they, they should, <laughs> right? They should have kind of a, a plan A, plan B mapped out of like, okay, if we go this, like we're, we're, we want to get a star. So let's go with that direction. But even if we don't get a star, okay, we want to go kind of, we want to go the depth route. I think both of those blueprints kind of fit in the same regard, 
right? Where you take kind of the best player available. But you also got to, again, what does the landscape look like? You know, are you looking, do you believe you can sign a Valanchunas? Do you believe you can sign a guy, right? Andre Drummond, whatever, right? So then at that point, it's like, do you really want to draft Zach Eady, who's just going to ride the bench? And, you know, he's, what, 22, 23 already? It's like, you know, he's probably going to spend the next two years in development. By that point, he's 25, 26. You might as well take a younger guy that you that you like that can spend the next two, three years developing. Now you have, you know, Christy, Lewis, him, and then whatever else, right? So, again, it just, to me, it's like, what is what is the path that the Lakers want to go on? Now, I know a lot of people, again, no matter what, they want a big man. But, like, what if, again, if they trade the 17th pick, what if there are no good big men at 55? Or even if the Lakers move up a little bit, what if there are no good big men at that? Like, now you're talking about second-round picks? Again, that's even even bigger crapshoot. So at that point, you take the play. In my opinion, you take the player that is the best available. Right. The only way I think you take again the position of need is if it's close, right? If it's like right there, even if it's just marginal, right? Like, but if it's like we could draft this center, but this guy is like five times better, right? Like, it is killing it. And again, Lakers have multiple positions of need. It's not like they only need a center. So, anyway, as always, this is a discussion. Pass question to you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? What are your thoughts? How do you feel? What do you think the Lakers' plan should be? What do you think the Lakers should do as far as uh, the draft goes? Do you think, no, no matter what, you got to get a big fella? Do you think, like, no, get the best player available, right? You do have other positions of need. Go get a forward. Go get whatever. Power forward. Whatever you name it. Um, again, how do you feel? What are your thoughts on Love to hear it. Let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. It helps me a lot. So me enjoy these types of videos. Truly appreciate it. Not subscribe channel. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.